Hi guys, welcome back to another week of Kidopolis with Miss Jessie. This is Kidopolis for now and this is Miss Jessie. Uh, probably forever I'll be Miss Jessie. Um, but we are in a new month. If you can believe it, it is October, which is just cuckoo bananas that this year was like, I mean, it's been the worst year, right? What do you think? I think it's been the worst year, but it's gone by really fast, right? Like, can you believe that it's already October and soon enough, the best season of all is going to be here, Christmas. The Christmas season is my favorite season, followed very closely by fall, which there is a quote that I love and I'm going to share with you today. It doesn't come from our Bible, but it's very good. And it is from the book Anne of Green Gables. And they, she says, I am so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers, right? I love this month. I think it's an, um, like... An amazing reminder of how beautiful that God is, that he makes things new, that, you know, um, death, which is what happens when the leaves fall from the tree, doesn't have to be scary and ugly. It can be beautiful and wonderful. And right around the corner, right around the new year, there's going to be a new life. So October is great for that. It's not the best, best season because that's Christmas, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. So this month, the theme is off stage. Drop the act. Um, I'm not a very good actress, but I'm pretty dramatic. So hopefully I can do this lesson series justice. Um, there's actually like a little like, it's not this kind of mask, but it's like this kind of mask. Like this. Does that make sense to you guys? Anyway, I'll get that printed for you so you can see. Um, but you guys have great imagination, so you can see it. And what that means is our Bible doesn't teach us how to be thespians or um, actors headed to Broadway. But what we need to be reminded is that we need to live with integrity. Sorry, I was looking at my computer for a few minutes. It froze. But we need to live with integrity. And that means choosing to be truthful. Choosing to be truthful. Sometimes you have to make that choice in whatever you say and do. Okay? Live with integrity. And this week... Specifically, we are talking about how important it is for you to be truthful in your whole life, okay? And not just like from the time that you're born to the time that you you pass and go to live, be with Jesus, but like in your whole life throughout your day with your words and with your actions and no matter who you're with. So we have a really good story um, about somebody who did that and you're going to like it. Give me one second to have... Refill my coffee and I'll be right back. Hello! Um, it should come as no surprise to you, if it is, you must be new here, that Miss Jessie spilled her coffee on her shirt and I figured I would drop the act and come clean and be truthful in my whole life that, you know, I could probably think of a really cool way to spin <laughs> my costume change since it's like a drama thing, but you know what? I'm gonna be truthful with you. I just spilled my coffee and it happens. More than it should. Anyways, we're going to move on <clears throat> to our story, which comes from the book of Daniel. We are in the book of Daniel for now. And we're going to be... Whoa, Jacob's doing some fancy zoomy doomies. Apparently I had too much coffee. Um, this is in the Old Testament. And we're going to be talking about chapter 1. So find your Bible, or don't, you can just listen. I'm going to tell you about the story, and then um, John and Brandon, and it's not Guy the Bible Guy, <laughs> Kellen. Guy the Bible Guy is a different uh, a different set of stories, which if you miss Guy the Bible Guy and Emily, let us know. We'll make sure that you can talk, or see their show. Kellen, John, and Brandon will probably do a much better job of telling the story. But I'm going to give it a go, all right? <clears throat> Okay, in the book of Daniel, we're learning about this place called Babylon, which when I was in the sixth grade, I had a social studies teacher, her name was Mrs. Fraley. You don't need to know that, that's not on the quiz today. But Mrs. Fraley, um, like I said, she taught social studies. And in our textbook was this beautiful illustration of this like really pretty white um, like palace with like these really nice pillars and it had plants and flowers hanging and it looked beautiful and I said I cannot wait to visit there when I'm old enough and I have money. I'm gonna put it on my bucket list even though I don't know if I knew what a bucket list was then but 
like I, it was like the idea of a bucket list. I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go. Turns out <clears throat> never going to happen. Not just because I can't really afford it, but it doesn't exist anymore. It's in ruins. You can visit the ruins, but what's the point? Anyways, it's in our Bible. We can learn a lot more um, and see a lot more of God's beauty in the Bible, right? Than a city of ruins. So let's do that. Um, there was a king of Babylon and his name was Nebuchadnezzar. And I want you to grab your pen and paper and write this down. I'm only going to spell it once for you and there's a quiz at the end. N-E-B-U-C-H-A-D-N-E-Z-Z-A-R. Okay? Nebuchadnezzar. And he had an assistant ish, his name, as a servant, I guess, Ashpenaz. The chief of his court officials is what my Bible says. Ashpenaz is spelled A-S-H-P-E-N-A-Z. And Ashpenaz was sent out to get these strong, smart, um, really ooh, attractive, handsome young men to come and be trained to be servants of the king. And they uh, were Israelite men, which well, Israel is kind of a little bit in trouble with God at this point because they had spent a while dishonoring him and not living in the way that he wanted them to and told them to. So there was this group of Israelite men. Um, in this case, their names are Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Um, you're just going to have to guess on the spelling. I don't have time to spell those all out. And they were pulled in to be like go through this like training program. I imagine if it were in modern times and they were going through this training program, there would definitely be a show on TLC about it. So in this training program, they were taught how to dress like a Babylonian. They were taught how to speak like a Babylonian. They were taught how to read and write like one. They even did something kind of cuckoo bananas. And by kind of, I mean a lot. They changed their names. They changed their names. So they sounded more Babylonian when they introduced themselves. Daniel became Belteshazzar. Hananiah became Shadrach. Again, all in the test. Mishael became Meshach. And Azariah became Abednego. And that's a tricky one, but I'll give you a hint. The N is after the D and not before. Okay? And there's only one N. So, oh, that seems kind of crazy. I don't think I would like somebody... Changing my name as an adult, I mean, even as a kid, do you know, you know your name and your name's probably pretty important to you. How would you like it if some guy was just like, you got a new name now? And what would you say if that name was Abednego? Oh, probably not. It wouldn't be happy. Anyways, they dealt with that. They did it, right? And they're like, well, okay, I guess. Um, and then, then came the thing that changed it. They were told that they had to eat like a Babylonian. They were told that they had to eat at the king's table, which was a really big honor. But Daniel and his friends felt that it would really dishonor God. That that was the straw that was going to break the camel's back. They just could not do it. So he actually did something quite honorable, in my opinion. He went up to Ashpenaz and he was like, hey, um... This eating your food thing, that doesn't work for us. Can we not eat your food? And Ashpenaz was like, no, dude, you got to eat our food. You got to be strong. You got to, like, this is good food. It's going to make you healthy. You got to do it. And then Daniel, he went um, to his personal guard and he was like, hey, can we try 10 days? Give me 10 days to see how we do by not eating the Babylonian food. We'll eat vegetables and we'll drink water. And the guard was like, you seem like a cool dude. You're pretty nice. Sure. So we let him do it. And turns out that when the king came to see all of his new servants under training, there were four men in particular who stood out. Can you guess who they are? Can you spell their names? Belt Belteshazzar. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They looked awesome. They looked great. They were answering all the questions right. Um, so they were proving that they were smart and that their brains were functioning at full capacity. Uh, they uh, even had shown a special ability of understanding people's dreams. 
So they served the king. They went through their three years and they served the king. And they never, my handwriting is messy. They never stopped staying strong for God was what I wrote. They never stopped staying strong for God, even when it became hard, even when it came down to your food. Like, I don't even know how scary it would be to not, like, what if, like, the solution was you don't ever get to eat again? If you don't eat with me, you don't eat at all. What if that's what they said? Oh, my gosh, that'd be scary. But they knew, they knew that it would dishonor God. Also, the flip side of it, I think it says in the Bible, was that God was, like, looking out for them. And he made sure that he was in favor with the guards so that it could happen. And what a beautiful way for God's way of life being shown to be good. That you wouldn't think that, um, I don't know how much my friends watching know about nutrition, but you know that a really balanced diet is important. You need protein, you need healthy fats, you need fruits, you need vegetables because those have vitamins and you need the minerals and all that. And <clears throat> like they were just eating vegetables. So their protein wasn't probably really good and protein is really important for building muscles, right? I don't know if you know that, but it's true. You need protein for muscles. But they eat vegetables and they did great. So cool. So they never stopped staying strong for God. They chose to show integrity and be truthful with who they were and truthful for God through their whole life. So when your mom asks you to eat your vegetables, just do it. That's not the moral of the story. I hope you guys got something different out of it. But you're going to go watch the so-and-so show and I'll meet you right back here. I won't spill coffee on myself again. I'll be in the same shirt. See you in a minute. Okay. I like to go swimming. Uh, my favorite snack is apricots. Uh, I always forget to mail my dad a birthday card. Oh, okay. Those are, those are good ones. Um, what's the lie? What's the lie? Swimming. Swimming. You don't really like swimming. Actually, I do. Like oh, the lie no. was the birthday card. I'm, I'm pretty great about remembering birthdays. Okay. Go. Okay, okay, wow. Okay, it's, uh, that's impressive. Okay, my turn, my turn. I have hair. I wear glasses. I'm immune to gravity. Okay, that's a tough one. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to have to go with the gravity thing. Oh! Yes, how do you know? I, I don't know. All right, all right, here you go. Here, here you go, okay. I hate pepper jelly. I used to be afraid of chipmunks. I own 42 copies of the book, The Hobbit. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I know this one. I know it's The Hobbit. That's because you only own 39 copies of The Hobbit. Do you count my books? I am the son of an astronaut. I eat chocolate pudding at 3 a.m. And I have 12 toes. Okay. The game is two truths and a lie, John, not three lies. Neither of your parents is an astronaut. You wouldn't eat chocolate pudding at three every morning because you always need help opening your pudding cups. And as far as the 12 toes, I think I would have known. You don't know how many toes I have. You don't know. I mean, I'm pretty. No, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I'm going to show them. No, 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 no. Everyone, I'm Brandon and I'm John and welcome to the Sue and Sue Shoes. <laughs> You're so funny. He's so funny. The so and so show, John. <laughs> but he's right. Welcome to our most devoted, loyal, happy audience who always warms our hearts, gives us purpose and makes us feel so cheerful. Wow, you are in a good mood today. I'm always in a good mood, John. Really? <laughs> I'm the peppiest person I know. Oh, you must not know a lot of people. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Any minute now. Any minute now what? Oh, I'm, I'm interviewing later today to be a member of a very prestigious society. Oh. The interviewer should be here. Any minute now. What's the society? Oh, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Oh, you're being sincere. Yeah, of course I'm being sincere. I'm a sincerely, perpetually peppy person. You? I am! Okay. Okay, maybe I'm not always peppy, but anyone who's anyone is a member of the SOS PPP, and I prefer being a perpetually peppy person who's popular, plus it looks really good on a resume, so if you'll just make me look good in front of the interviewer, I would really appreciate it. Do you think you can do that for me, best friend in the whole world? Um, sure. All right. Hello, peppy people! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Samantha, and I'm the senior assistant selector for the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. Well, welcome, welcome. Oh, you must be Brandon. Oh, what? No, no, I'm John. Uh, this is Brandon. Yes. Oh, oh. Hi, I'm, I'm the Brandon that you, were, the person you wanted to see when you, when you, well, I'm, I'm the, he, he's me. <laughs> it is a pleasure, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> sit, yes. sit, sit, sit. I am sitting. No, what no. Is, oh, oh, hey, hey, sit down. Oh. I mean, would you, uh, here, have a, have a seat. Here. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. On, the, on the chair that there's, <laughs> Thank I was putting you. out Thank for you. you. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. So, how are you doing today, Brandon? Splendidly. I'm so good because of, you know, all of the... The, the, the birds and the sunshine and the happy, happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, so happy this morning, I barely recognized him. Oh, John. I, I mean, I mean he, you know, I looked at him and I said, whoa, who, who is this? Please stop helping me. I, I really like your club. Yeah. Oh, well, thank too. you. We at the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People pride ourselves on our constant cheerfulness, happiness, peppiness, merriment, glee, and bliss. D don't those all mean the same thing? <laughs> Let's get to the interview, shall we? Oh, I love interviews. Actually, it's more of a game. Oh, I love games. <laughs> yeah, me too. Can I play too? Of course, awesome. of course. So I'll hold up a photo, and you say the first thing that pops in your head. Oh, I love saying the first thing that pops into my head. I do it all the time. Uh, uh, door. <laughs> uh, lamp. Uh, uh, giant pencil. I'm having so much fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so photo number one. Uh, Brandon, you go first. Uh, okay, uh, sleep. No, I only say that because sleep is what I want to do when I watch soccer. I mean, it's not a negative thing. Sleep is important for your health. <laughs> okay, um, try to keep your answers to one or two words, okay? Oh, right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. right. Um, John? Uh, fun. Okay. Numero... Dosa. Uh, uh, brain freeze. Yummy. Mm. Three. Uh, oh, loud. Uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Ants. Oh, watermelon. Um. Uh. Oh. Oh, expensive. Party. Um. Excuse me. Uh, Brandon, are you okay? Of course. Why? Well, it just seems your answers don't seem particularly perpetually peppy. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I think I'm just nervous. I mean, you're the senior assistant selector. If I'd have known they were bringing the SAS of the SOS PPP here, I'd have been more personally prepared to be perpetually peppy. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah. But just so you know, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People isn't for everyone. Some people are only peppy periodically, and that's okay. It is? Certainly! You know, some people only want to join the society because they think it'll make them popular. What? I know, I know, but what really matters is staying true to who you are. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get on with the game, shall we? Oh. All right, I just have one more picture. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's Bible, Bible story time with Galen. Hey guys. Hey Galen. Hey Galen. I am very excited for our story today. So let's jump right in. Take it away. Okay. Over 2000 years ago, around 600 BC, there was a kingdom called Babylon, with a king named Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was not exactly a good guy. In fact, he was pretty evil. 
King Nebuchadnezzar. You know what? That's a really long name. So I'm just going to call him King Nebi. King Nebi and his army surrounded and attacked the city of Jerusalem. And he stole from the temple of God. Then King Nebi gave the order to take some of the Israelites hostage so they could be his personal servants. He wanted only the smartest, strongest, and healthiest to be brought to Babylon as captives to learn his ways and serve him at his palace. One of the men captured was named Daniel. Daniel wasn't exactly a superhero. He was just a person like you and me, but he was put to a big test. As part of their training, the men who were captured were ordered to eat food from the king's table. This food was different than the food they normally ate to honor God. And Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, believed the king's food would make them unclean. So Daniel asked an official for permission to eat something else. But the official was afraid that if Daniel and his friends didn't eat the king's food, they would become weak and unhealthy. But Daniel was determined to stay true to who he was and to honor God no matter what. So he convinced the guard to give him and his friends only vegetables and water for 10 days. And after the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked stronger and healthier than everyone. After that, Daniel and his friends were allowed to eat the food they wanted. God gave these four men knowledge and understanding. They became some of the wisest men in the kingdom. It may not have been the best circumstance. Daniel and his friends had lost their homes. They'd lost their freedom. But with God's help, they kept their honesty and their integrity, and they stayed true to who God made them to be. The end. What a cool story. Yeah, even with all that pressure to be like everyone else, Daniel chose to be himself. You find a lot of that in the Bible. Look at Jesus. It would have been really easy for Jesus to go along with the crowd. But instead, he only lived the way he knew was true, even if it meant giving his life up for you and me. Incredible. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, see you next time, Kellen. No problem, fellas. Bye. Bye. John. You were right. Whoa. You think I was right about something? <laughs> do, do go on. No, it's about the society of sincerely, perpetually peppy people. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. And I'm okay with that. I mean, it's great to be happy and peppy, but it's also good to have other emotions too. And I'd rather be myself than try to fit into some club. That's awesome. Brandon, I am very proud of you. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I'm practically perpetually proud. Okay. I am positively pleased. Okay, stop. <laughs> Reveal the question. How do you want people to describe you? That's interesting. How do I want people to describe me? What do I want to be known for? I, I, I want to be known as the life of the party. The guy who can, you know, stick out his tongue and touch his nose. And I want people to describe me as someone who's sometimes peppy, sometimes not, and that's okay. <laughs> what about you? How do you, how do you want people to describe you? Hey, look, I did it. I stuck out my tongue and I touched my nose. Yeah, that's very, very Isn't talented. Good? We'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah, bye. Please place the pleated pressed pants on the plain pressing plant. A pack of pesky pixies. A pack of pesky pixies. Frothy fructose. Frontogenesis. <laughs> that, was, that was fructose. September. Mom makes mash m marmalade. Gum gets gooey. Gum gets gumptious. Gooey gumptious gum is gargantuanly gooey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> memory verse time i hope you like the story um i haven't watched it yet i will so hopefully they actually told the story and i'm not like just go watch the story and then there's no story but probably a good video either way
Anyways, it's memory verse time. Uh, we are going to go over our memory verse together. It is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. So let's do it the good old fashioned way. Um, again, Proverbs are a little bit different. Not too much different. It's not like Psalms where the Psalms are numbered differently than like the chapter format. But um, anyways, we're going to do it the good old Miss Jessie way where we find it together, okay? So get out your Bible. should be nice and thick. And again, my Bible is NIV. Our memory verse this week comes from NIV, New International Reader's Version. If you didn't see let me talk about the difference between those last week. I'm sure it's a treat to watch. Just kidding, I don't know that. Okay, so we're in Proverbs. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different actually. Here's a trick about Proverbs. If you ever wanna try and find the book of Proverbs and even the book of Psalms, um, of course, we usually go to the front um, if we don't know what order they're in. And, you know, my Bible has them alphabetically and in order that they are in the Bible. But the cool thing about Proverbs is usually if you open your Bible up about to the middle, you'll find yourself in Proverbs or Psalms. That's pretty cool. That's a good trick, right? So try that. See where you end up. If I do that, I mean, I have this bobby pin acting as a bookmark for some reason. Um, so that's probably where it's going to open. But, oh, I'm in Job. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time because I was trying to get away from the bobby pin. Open it halfway. Psalms. Okay, I'm in Psalms, but we're going to go to ten, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Tell me where you ended up. I'm just curious. I think that's interesting to find out where people are. Proverbs chapter 10. So now we're in Proverbs. You find the big number 10. If you find a little number 10, you can be in any old chapter. You need to find the big number 10. Mine actually has it labeled as Proverbs of Solomon. It looks like there's several, but yours might not have that. But so I found the big number 10 on my Bible. See it right there? And now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do my pen. I'm gonna like run, you can run your finger down, but my pen here. And I'm like, see these tiny numbers? Well, there's two, three, four, five, and up here, six, seven. Oh, up here we are, chapter nine. Do you see that tiny number nine? It's about half the size of the rest of the text. There's a note from something else. You don't need to read that. You can if you want, just not necessary for today. Chapter 10, verse 9 is, I'll read it out when I'm in, out of my notebook because this is the version that you're learning. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Let's talk about that for a second. A crooked path. Do you think they really mean like a path? Or do you think, let's look back at the first sentence, what kind of path were they talking about? They didn't really say a path, but they said somebody who walks without blame. So I don't think that they literally mean anybody who walks crooked is going to get caught and is bad. I think that what they're referring to in here, crooked, means um, a morally bad path. Something that is probably not in line with God. You're in line with God or you're not in line with God. So that's what we are memorizing this week. Tell me what you think it means. I don't know. I could be totally off base. That's just me reading it now and thinking out loud. Um, anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Okay, we will do a shorter version of that verse next week for any younger kiddos or somebody who doesn't necessarily want to memorize those two sentences or um, maybe is a little intimidated by those. That's okay. We want you to memorize as much as you can and send me a video, FaceTime me. If you see me at the tie-dye event, come and say hi and see if you uh, have your memory verse down and I will have a treat delivered to you, okay? Speaking of the tie-dye event, um, it's probably too late now by the time you're watching it to sign up for it, but if you're coming or if you came, thank you so much. So excited to see you. And if you haven't, but you want a tie-dye shirt that says Kidopolis on it, let me know. Miss Jessie will tie-dye one for you. I will make sure you get one, okay? Let me know. If I have any friends 
watching this, let me know. <laughs> let me know if you want um, a tie-dye shirt. I don't want anybody to be left out, okay? This is this goes back to our block party theme, kind of. Everyone's invited. Every You get a tie-dye shirt. You get a tie-dye shirt. You get a tie-dye shirt. Okay, let me know. We're going to go on to prayers. Um, and then we're going to say peace out, okay? Here we go. I'm going to pray probably by myself. I have a cat over here who's being my buddy, but she, no, no requests from her. Oh, she wants more treats. Sorry. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, thank you so much for this week. Thank you so much for giving me a world where there are Octobers, where um, there's always a chance to refresh, where there's always chances to start over. Thank you so much for your word and your way of life and the directions in, in your word in the Bible that you give us to live. Thank you for people who uh, help point us towards you. Thank you for giving us tools and passion um, and your love to point others towards you. Um, we love you, God. We pray right now for the health of everyone in this nation and in this world. We pray um, for anybody who is feeling ill right now from that nasty virus that is going on. We pray, Lord, that you give wisdom to the doctors and the nurses and the researchers who are helping us move on from this crazy, weird time. And we thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord, for all of the science and tools that you've given us to live a healthy and safe life and to give us um, a chance to move on from this. Even if it is slow, Lord, we thank you so much for this time. And we thank you for everything. Um, pray for this cat over here. Um, pray that I remember to give her treats and love so that we can have a happy home. Because everybody knows if you're in a home with an unhappy cat, it's an unhappy home. Um, so, Lord, uh, thank you so much. I pray for my friends. I hope they're doing great. Thank you so much. Amen. I almost told God I would see him next week, but I'm pretty sure he'll see me before then. Uh, I could be wrong, but okay, guys, that's all I have this week. Um, like I said, we're getting ready for the tie-dye event. I'm about to go do my last, like, little trip to get ready for it, um, and then I'll see some of you tomorrow, and hopefully I'll be hearing from some of you if you really want one of those shirts, okay? Have a good week. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Bye-bye. S-E-Z-E-R. I think that's it. Is that right? I can't tell you. you got to finish your test. Ashpenaz is next. Oh, this is harder than I thought. <laughs>